Welcome back to series two and episode one of Anthony Mates for Queer 40 magazine. Well, we kicked off the series last year, um, well, actually, it's nearly two years ago now during lockdown. Uh, and episode one was uh, the fabulous Angie Brown, which kind of set the energy for the rest of the episodes. We saw Bonnie Tyler. We saw Tapai, we saw Charlene. So keeping with the icons theme, we, the pressure was on. We had to get a really big name in uh, for episode one of series two. And I give you none other than Kim Wilde. Kim, hello. Hello, darling. How are you doing today? I'm all the better for seeing you, Kim. <laughs> I'm all the better for seeing you too, Anthony. <laughs> so... Kim, you're not just here to, to chat to me, much as I love the idea that you just give up your afternoon to chat just to me, but you have a big project going on. What's happening? Well, I'm just about to start my Greatest Hits tour, Anthony, on the 10th of September. And I haven't really got my head around the fact that I'm just about to go on a tour, not just in the UK throughout September, but then jumping into Germany and thereafter into Holland and Sweden and back in time just for Christmas. So, um, yeah, I've I really I, I've run out of eyeliner. I've <gasps> run out of really good mascara. I really definitely don't have any makeup that's the same colour as my skin. Um, I'm woefully un, unprepared from that point of view. I've got all my costumes sorted, so that's important. Done that. Uh, the band, everything, all the all the really important stuff is, is boxes are ticked, but I'm a little bit behind. I should probably go to the hairdressers, but I haven't really <laughs> haven't really sorted that out either. So it's it's all a bit hit and miss in in the uh, chaise moi. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've absolutely no doubt at all you'll pull it out of the bag. But actually, just that you hit on that, the looks thing. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you stormed a chart as a musician and everybody loves the music. Undisputable. A queen of pop, without a doubt. But the pressure was on from a fashion perspective as well. You instantly became a fashion icon. Well, when I started, I was buying all my clothes from uh, Oxfam and um, I wasn't really into... Uh, high fashion at all and um, I got more into fashion as obviously as the videos progressed you know and I was like wearing some nice as a Dean Lalaya and and I did enjoy wearing all of that of course I did um, but um, I never felt myself as being so much a style icon though I was it was quite hit and miss sometimes I, I really pulled it off and other times I absolutely didn't um, and but I've got into really got into costumes in the last few years and my Here Come the Aliens tour and I was wearing my sort of spaceship, my space outfit, um, space invader outfit. And I even had a little plastic illuminated laser gun. And um, I really had fun with that, um, going all a bit sci-fi. Um, and now I'm going a bit glam rock for the Greatest Hits tour and I've had some fabulous costumes made. So I'm very excited. Amazing. And, and I, I believe that there's a big light show and stuff involved as well. It's it's not just about the music. It's going to be extravaganza kind of show. Yeah, yeah we've got a lovely lighting guy who just does an incredible job. Uh, John Davis just does a beautiful job, makes us look incredible. Um, so, yeah, we've we've pulled out some stops to make it. I mean, we want it to look as great as it's going to sound. But, you know, it's all about the music. You know, it'll be our greatest hits, but we'll put in some some unexpected stuff. But it, it will be reflective of what's happening on my greatest hits album. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's all it's all there. It's all it's a KW night. You know, it's unashamedly so, you know. Um, come and come and be uh, come and be seduced. Gorgeous, love it. <laughs> um, and it's no surprise actually that you you know ended up in music. You come from music royalty. You've got Marty Wad. Your mum was part of the Vernons. Your sister Roxanne works with Kylie. Your brother writes music. So it, it, it's it's a family hit factory, really, isn't it? It is actually, yeah. And we all absolutely worship pop music and in all its different genres, you know, in every single genre you can imagine. And then it all comes under this sweet little umbrella called pop. Yeah. And that's where I put myself, you know, I, I just figure, well, I'll, I'm just going to be a, I'm a, bit, I'm, I'm a pop star. I just may as well just go, you know, uh, get real with it. This is what I am. And that's why I wrote Pop Don't Stop, which was, a, you know, an ode to pop music itself and all the great things it's brought into my life and into my brother's life and and all the all you know people in the audience 
gorgeous. Um, and obviously, you know, our audience is it's an LGBTQ plus audience um, and you are a massive gay icon. Uh, we all love you so much. We, 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 we kind of feel an ownership of you in some ways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you would have been around, you know, back in the 80s through the night. You would have seen the gay scene changing, I suppose, um, as we get more into a more acceptable, equal sort of place. Yeah, and that's been a wonderful thing to to witness and be a part of. Um, so we are on, you know, very optimistic days now, I think. And um, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of work still to be done for all the, for the communities um, involved, but um, they know what, what work that is to be done and, and do it with style, you know, and Pride is such a fabulous celebration. I love that. Um, and that's a, a beautiful thing and there are pl places around the world obviously where it's very dangerous to be gay or be any of anything other than you know what's perceived as normal or, or heterosexual I don't know what they I hate these labels I mean who yeah. needs them anyway I know but um you know there's a there is a you know it's it's moving on things are, are starting to move on in a really positive way and I love that Oh, brilliant. Um, and obviously you came out of uh, music for a while and then just became, again, synonymous for something else completely different, which was, of course, um, uh, horticulture and garden design. Yeah. And how on earth did this happen? I know. Um, well, I was always a, a country girl from when I moved to London to the countryside when I was about nine, just after la man landed on the moon. I saw that happen from uh, in the living room in London, in South East London. And then we moved to Hertfordshire. And that's when I thought, oh, I love the countryside and all the flowers and the, the green and the trees. And then of course, in the eighties, my life just went off to be, you know, became just this fabulous adventure of being 20 something and a pop star. And then I sort of landed as a 30 year old, sort of longing for something more. Um, and by the time I got to 36, got married and had children, you know horticulture just really came in and now it's it's a massive part of my life um it's just as much as pop music is and and performing it's not diminished you know they they live side by side that they need each other yeah good I mean, that's actually that was going to be my next question um i watched an interview with your dad and your, and your sister um i think i can't remember it was the 80s memory road trip or something like that i think it might have been at your house actually it was a beautiful yeah. garden behind you um and, and what i thought was lovely actually was it, it's very obvious to see as a family the music never stopped yeah it never stops i mean my dad is still um jumping in the car and going off and doing a gig uh you know my sister roxanne she's been doing a lot of work with um claire from altered images lately of course she worked with kylie for 10 years um, my brother's always writing, always producing. My son is, is just about to go on tour with a band called Wonder Horse. Um, yeah, so music is just, you know, it's, it's just so close. You know, we can't, I wouldn't want to shake it off. But I mean, you know, I would have a real hard tra time trying to do that if I did. Now, I've got to ask you, is your Christmas song on your Christmas playlist? I love my Christmas album. It's one of the best projects um, that I was involved in doing for my career. And um, it came about inspired greatly by that sort of um, piss up on a train and, and antlers and drunk and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if anyone listening knows what I'm talking about, but three million people uh, went on YouTube and watched me genuinely drunk after, yeah. a, after a Christmas party singing Christmas songs with my brother Ricky Wilde, who had a real hard time keeping standing up. In fact, fell over with his guitar at one point. <laughs> and I, I think I only got saved by the fact that I was wearing antlers, which kind of gave it a festive vibe. Otherwise it could have looked truly tragic. And um, yeah, so it actually, then it kind of kicked me into gear. And I thought, you know what, I, I love Christmas. And I started putting the album together and it was, it ended up being more original songs than covers, as it turned out, and it became a real labour of love. And every Christmas, I stopped myself from playing it before December the 1st. But a month isn't long enough to play Christmas songs and no. Christmas albums. So I'm, I might let myself off and just give myself November this year. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I walk about looking like I'm OK, but inside I secretly want to put a Christmas tree up. <laughs> oh, no, really. I mean, I've already I've already found the one in my garden that's going to be going to cop it and end up in the living room. 
I love it. So one of the questions we always ask um, is kind of the rose and thorn question, you know, so you've had this wonderful life as a pop star. So what was your favorite sort of high and what was the low? What was the what was the thorn? I think the thorn was the first time when it all kind of seemed to be disappearing. And I had to really kind of face up to that in a but it was quite brutal because obviously my career had begun massively with Kids in America and I was traveling the world and you know more hits and View from a Bridge and Cambodia was a massive hit and sold a million copies in France alone and um, so this was just like getting higher and higher and then and then it just you know I, I guess it was a third album you know and things just suddenly started dipping and a bit more and I do remember you know, that was hard, you know, the first low of not being the flavour, I guess, of the month. So the yeah. first cut, you know, the first cut is the deepest kind of thing. Yeah. But then I got used to it, you know, because then my career sort of revived in 1988 with Close and You Came and all those Never Trust a Stranger and Four Letter Word. And, and then I kind of, I realised that I was going to have a career like that, that it was always going to be an up and down career. There were going to be great moments and less great moments. And, but actually it all evened out in the end because, you know, I learned so much in the down times and I celebrated in the good times. And so now there's not, you know, you, it's, it takes a lot to phase this old bird <laughs> not so old if you're old i'm old <laughs> um, yeah so that's what it actually something that i've had in conversation uh quite recently uh somebody i, I won't say who they were talking about somebody made a reference to somebody's comeback and i and i said you can't talk about an icon like that and then say comeback they've never gone away <laughs> their career hasn't stopped they may not have been releasing music this past couple of years or whatever but they haven't stopped this is not yeah. a comeback. This is a continuation. Um, how do you feel about that? When do people talk to you about a comeback, or? Well, they just haven't been paying attention, have they? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's more their problem than mine. I mean, I haven't literally haven't stopped. Um, I did take a, a, a big step out of my career in '96 when I got married and when we had our children, and that's what that was a decision that I made. Um, and then it was a decision to get back in to play live music with a lot of 80s icons and do that whole 80s revival thing, which I really resisted, actually, for quite some time. They kept, you know, getting in contact with me. I said, no, 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 no one wants to marry, you know, I'm, I'm a woman of a certain age now and I'm, I'm definitely not the size 10 I used to be. And, um, you know, no one wants to, you know, I've got a couple of kids and I've got a dog and, you know, it's not, the, the romance is gone. You know, let's let's just face it. I can't even wear the same hairstyle anymore. Everyone used to rave about that hairstyle. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and, and so I was amazed when um, I got back on stage and the audience were there just having a ball. So yeah. I haven't stopped. You know, I mean, it's it, it's all audience led. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. And you were saying actually, your son uh, he's in a band now. He's going on tour. Um, what advice would you give people coming up in the industry now? Um, because we have this sort of insta celeb where everybody's famous for 15 minutes what what sort of what would be the the wisdom that you would give <laughs> to them coming behind yeah I think you know it's uh, I mean I had a great team around me right from the start and that really helped so I think you know be very careful who you choose to have on your team um, get your team together um, uh, and give them give them um, what's the word license you know don't clip their wings you know if you're going to work with someone let them be who they are and let them give to you what how what they want to give the way they want to give it don't tell them how to be them yeah and, and in the meantime you don't let anyone tell you how to be you and you, and if you love music you'll find a way and um, fame is a very fickle thing so forget about fame but focus on the really important things your passion what it is you love to do and the people you surround yourself with be very careful who you surround yourself with yeah excellent advice well look on that I'm just going to finish off with some more information about your tour so you have China Crisis joining you I believe yes I love them wow Fantastic. And am I right in saying you kick off Saturday the 10th of September in Gateshead? That's right, Gateshead up in Newcastle. And then we finish in London at the Palladium. We're doing 11 shows throughout September um, in a town near you. <laughs> I, 
I'm I'm expecting VIP guest list, by the way, just so you know. Oh yeah, well, absolutely, sure, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> darling. Um, of course, because of course it was bound to be sold out. But I should think we could squeeze you in. Find me a jump seat, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they can get tickets at Kim Wild Wild with an E, obviously. dot com. Um, and where can we get the album? Oh well, you know, usual places. You know, it's it's out there. The Kim Wild pops don't stop. Album, there you go, a little picture of it there. <laughs> Another little picture of it there. Love uh, it. It's lovely, I love it. So absolutely yeah, gorgeous. Celebrating 40 years of uh, just loving the pop music and who knows, you know, another 10 years, 20 years, we'll still be having a chat about it. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Kim Wilde, we absolutely adore you. We're super you. grateful for your time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Obviously, wish you the very best with everything, the album, the gardening, the the, the tour. Um, and I'll definitely see you at one of the venues um, along the way. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Kim Wilde. Real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.